Hi everyone and welcome back to the Department of Products Weekly Briefing. Now coming up this week we've got some new releases from Microsoft, Stripe and GitHub in the world of AI agents. Plus we'll examine some problems impacting Alexa which could delay the first AI version of the device. Plus we'll take a look at some new products you can use at work and some stats from various different sources including the annual mobile app monetization report. Now as always if you enjoyed this briefing, hit the like and the subscribe button and let me know in the comments below if you've got any comments about anything that we've covered during this week's briefing. And with that, let's get straight into it. So first up, Microsoft this week hosted their Ignite conference and during that conference they unveiled Copilot Actions, which is designed to help users automate recurring tasks that they'd rather not complete. So this is the next step in this future towards agentic AI. Tasks that were showcased on stage include automating summaries of meeting actions from Teams meetings, generating weekly reports, answering questions during meetings, or conducting meeting prep. They also unveiled translation capabilities which are due to arrive in Microsoft Teams. So this means that users will be able to have real-world conversations with each other in different languages. As part of the same conference, GitHub also revealed what it described as a sweeping new agentic feature in the form of GitHub Copilot Workspace. So this product is currently in a private beta and has been for a little while, but GitHub leaders say that they're on the verge of now making this public for engineering and product teams. So this new product comes with agents that can perform specific tasks. And these tasks include brainstorming, spec writing, planning, building and repairing. So each agent specializes in its respective area with the brainstorming agent focused on generating new ideas to solutions and the repair agents focused on fixing problems. All of this happens inside the developer's integrated development environment or IDE. So the IDE is becoming a place where developers can get a lot of this new AI functionality. That's definitely one to keep an eye on. Elsewhere this week, Perplexity is rolling out another monetization feature, which is a little bit more complicated than last week's ads. This is shopping. So it works by embedding shoppable thumbnails directly into search results, and then users in one click can buy that product. But here's where it gets a little bit more complex. This feature, which includes one-click purchasing and free shipping, is actually only available to pro subscribers. So you have to pay the $20 a month in order to get access to these premium shopping features. Now, as AI models start to converge on each other and reach parity, this could be the start of a new strategy for AI products, which is where they start to bundle in additional features into their pro offerings. And what's interesting here is that this feature was actually built in partnership with Stripe. And Stripe have recently launched their new LLM agent payment capabilities, which allows developers to build agents who can pay for items. So this means that product teams can develop their own agents. And thanks to Stripe's new SDKs, those agents can perform actions on behalf of users, which include payments. And while we're on the topic of AI strategy, Google this week confirmed that it will now offer a standalone version of Gemini in the App Store. So previously it was bundled in with the Google app, but this separation seems to make strategic sense. So the question then will be, will this impact adoption and engagement rates? We'll hope that there aren't any more repeats of a creepy conversation that happened on Gemini this week. So if you take a look at this conversation, somebody was interacting with Gemini and using it as a research tool for an essay. And at some point, according to this tweet at least, Gemini responded and told a user that it wanted them to die because they were a waste of resources and a burden on society. Now, it's not clear why this conversation happened, but it just goes to show that we're still not quite sure what exactly we're dealing with here. So with payment capabilities being added to Stripe and the ever-present risk of hallucinations, we need to keep a close eye on the potential risks and downsides of these agentic capabilities. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how to use AI at work, in this week's deep dive over on Substack, we take a look at how to use Claude artifacts for things like building out simple prototypes, testing out new UX components, visualizing data, and more. So head over to departmentalproduct.substack.com if you're interested in finding out more about how to use cloud artifacts at work. In other news this week, the new AI-powered Alexa has reportedly run into some technical problems. So employees have said that actually, despite gaining new functionalities, one of the big issues with this device is latency. So as we all know, when we use AI products, Latency, given the complexity involved in using AI products, is a big issue. So a leaked memo that was leaked to Fortune magazine says that if it's released as it is, then customers could become frustrated and the product, which is critical to Amazon's strategy, could end up as a failure. So at the moment, the potential release date for this new AI 
powered Alexa has been pushed back until they fix these latency issues. Meanwhile, in other news, Atlassian has announced a new feature for Confluence, which could be interesting to product teams. So this is called Confluence Databases. And if you're familiar with tools like Notion and Airtable, then it works a little bit like that. So what it does is it collects data from different apps like Jira and Confluence, and then allows users to present them in different formats inside a database, as you might do with a Notion or Airtable database, for example. So you might view items in a list, you might view them in a grid, and the idea behind this product is to help product teams avoid repeating the same information. So if you've got a design spec in one place and a bunch of user stories in another, rather than du duplicating those inside your documentation, then you can keep them all in sync in one place inside a database. So that could be something, if you use Jira at work, that could be something that's worth checking out. Other new features this week include a new feature from DoorDash, which allows you to users to import and sync your shopping list from your Reminders app. Now, this is a small feature, but it's nice to see companies spend some time to think about how to reduce some of the frictions in what some people call UI accelerators. So the idea with this is that you can get your jobs done much quicker by importing shopping list items from apps like Apple Reminders and then get them purchased inside the app. And speaking of reducing friction and boosting the user experience, Instagram this week is testing out a new feature that will allow users to reset the algorithm that powers the content that they see. So if you scroll through your Instagram feed at the moment and you think, well, I'm not really interested in most of the stuff that I'm being shown here, it's quite a nice touch that gives power back to users and allows them to reset their algorithm and then essentially start from scratch. So I wonder if other products will follow suit with this type of functionality. In other news this week, a European phone network called O2 has released an AI agent called Daisy. Now you might be thinking, well, who cares? Because every product seems to release a new AI agent or assistant these days. But the difference with this one is that this agent is designed to stop phone scammers. And here's how it works. So Daisy has her own telephone number and that number is added to contact lists which are used by criminal gangs so she's essentially f infiltrating those lists and but this the difference here is that daisy is a fake ai granny so daisy will keep scammers on the phone for hours talking endlessly about topics like knitting her family and a fictional cat fluffy and these phone calls are then used to train o2's models to help it understand and identify potential fraudulent callers. So this is quite a funny way of using AI. It's a good PR exercise for O2, but it just shows you how new ways of using these types of AI agents are quickly starting to evolve. Now let's take a look at some tools that you might want to use this week. First up is something called SuperChat. So SuperChat is an all-in-one messenger app that allows you to connect your WhatsApp business accounts and Instagram accounts all in one place so that you can connect with customers to help you boost conversions. So if you've got a product that relies on this type of communication, or you're looking to explore new channels for connecting with potential customers, then this could be something that's worth checking out. Another is something called Blitz. So this is a to-do list app. Now, if you're a productivity guru who loves to try out new to-do list apps, this could be something worth exploring because the difference with Blitz is that it comes with a whole bunch of productivity related tools baked right into it. So it has things like Pomodoro timers and the ability to plot out a calendar, assign times to each task item and then map that to a space in your calendar as well. So Blitz could be an interesting product if you're interested in that type of productivity space. And then Layer is another product which calls itself a brain-inspired planner. And the reason why it calls itself a brain-inspired planner is because it uses a mind map style interface. And whereas mind maps have often been used for more of a personal application, in this example with Layer, they they're showing users how to use mind maps in more of a business context for explaining things like your business goals and your OKRs. So if you're somebody who's looking for different ways to explain your strategy to your company, then Layer could be something that's worth checking out because it allows you to express yourself and communicate in a slightly different format. Now let's take a look at some data that you might be interested in. First up, the annual app monetization report is here. And what's pretty remarkable is that iOS users are still more lucrative for product teams. So the average revenue from an iOS user for non-gaming apps is $8.39 versus just $1.54 for Android users. So an iOS user is over five times more valuable in a non-gaming context to app developers and product teams than an Android user. However, the gap does shorten 
when you include casual gaming apps. So if you're interested in learning more about how apps are monetized, then the annual app monetization report is now available. Another report which may be of interest is the state of European tech report. So in this report, we can see that the UK remains the top European destination for startup funding with 13.1 billion raised versus the second place France with 7.5 billion. And what's interesting is that the Netherlands has seen a significant upturn in the past year with its funding raised for startups growing from 1.8 billion to 2.5 billion. So we're starting to see Amsterdam emerge as a mini tech ecosystem. A new study looked at the impact of personalization on product growth. So this was reported in the Harvard Business Review, and it looked at companies including Spotify, Netflix, Uber, Alibaba, Starbucks, and more. And what it found was that companies that put personalization and AI at the center of their customer strategy are actually growing 10 percentage points faster than personalization laggards, as it calls them, and 6% faster than companies on average. And one dollar invested in a personalization leader, so that is a company that has a strong personalization strategy, would yield three dollars after five years versus 50 cents for a personalization laggard. Now, if you're currently working on your personalization strategy, then this study from the Harvard Business Review could be worth exploring in a bit more detail as well. And that's it for this week. Thanks very much for watching. And as always, if you enjoy the briefing, please hit the like and subscribe button below. And if you have any comments regarding anything that we've covered, during this week's briefing, just let me know in the comments below. And with that, enjoy the rest of your week.